Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to <clears throat> tonight's session. Um, this last topic is going to be the concluding topic of project management. And uh, if you follow all the processes sequentially, the way we've been following it, I know you can just start applying as a junior business uh, business uh, project manager, but you can do more than a, a junior project manager. You know, because uh, this is even what all the senior project managers are doing. It's just a, a practical experience, but all the knowledge is, is buried here. So the last topic is um, project management life cycle framework. You know, we have all these things we have been teaching is now, I want us to see how we can put all everything together, sequentially, how we are going to manage a project and uh, you follow it step by step. So you have this um, template by one, in, in, in one hand, then you can be looking at it and following your projects, managing your projects uh, stage by stage till you close the project. So that's why I call it life cycle. It starts from the beginning to the end. It covers every life cycle of a project in a sequential manner. So a framework is necessary to ensure structure when managing a project and is the catalyst for managing a project from initiation to closure. Four stages in, in project um, framework is um, what we have here. And the first stage is uh, initiate, when you initiate the project. Then the next stage is um, you design. Uh, that is when you, you, you come up with the solution architecture. You design the, the, the solution. And after designing the solution, the next stage is to execute the project. And then after, after successful execution, then you close the project. So that is the full life cycle. So <clears throat> let's look at the deliverables that uh, made, of, uh, com uh, made up of uh, this um, initiate stage. To initiate a project, if you follow this um, sequential process, then you should be able to successfully initiate your project. The first thing you do is to, as a project manager, is to receive the project brief. Project brief is equally the project mandate. And when you receive the brief, the next thing is to assemble your project team using a kickoff meeting where you invite every member of the team and then you introduce the project to them, reading out the project brief, what the project is all about, the problem that uh, you people intend to solve, and how you want to, to work with them is more of, more of um, uh, it can be so official or at times I don't make my own so official so that everybody will be comfortable. Just getting to know your project team members, 
understanding their background and uh, introducing the project's topic, what you guys are going to be doing. And from there, you start ar arranging for the next meeting to define rules and responsibilities using RACI metrics. And then when you define the project rules and responsibilities, the next thing is to um, identify, even it wouldn't be the RACI metrics, um, you probably need to identify uh, not only team members, you can capture stakeholders as well, because you use the metrics to, 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 to capture stakeholders. So after that, the next thing is to identify the project scoop. And after scoop, you identify the, we've done project um, scope management. So you should uh, be able to know how to identify scope. I'm not going to be teaching all these um, topics because we've done all these topics. I'm just uh, for you to see how all these topics we've treated, how they are going to uh, come in when you are managing your project. So it's not going to be like a new beginning of uh, teaching, uh, topic by topic. So after then, you select the project approach. At this point, you, you, you during the, the scope, Using uh, if you if you, if you don't your scope using project charter, you must have seen the approach that is approved to be used. So, if it's one approach, you use it. If you have option to select one uh, out of different approaches, you select whichever approach or methodology. So, outline the goals of the project, and then. Identify stakeholders and the expectation. And then you create um, a business case. And to create a business case, you must go through um, requirement gathering and analyzing the requirements in order to create a business case. And once you've created a business case, um that is the the end of uh, initiate stage you should have uh, successfully initiated your your project because business case we didn't treat business case here in project management because it's not a project management deliverable it's a business analysis deliverable it's not for project managers to create business case so that's why we are not going to treat, why that's why I didn't treat business case here. So because you might see some deliverable here that we didn't treat. Yeah, the issue is because some of those deliverables are not for project managers to do them. Then we are going to treat business case in business analysis. So, Initiate stage will help you to uh, answer the following question. Is the project justifiable? Is it worth investing in the project? And is the project viable? So these are the things you need to, to look at in the project. Once you've, um, you are sure that the project is viable after your requirement analysis, which you are going to be doing, these are the things we are going to be doing in business case. Business, I, I mean business analysis. Business analysis is going to be treating Requirement uh, gathering, requirement analysis, and the creating of a business case. So once we're done with that, then it's time to 
move to the next stage, which is define stage. And that is where the solution architecture starts. That's why we, we where we design our our solution. And at this pro, at this stage is um is good that we have we need to start because at this point we should be encountering risks within the the project and this time we start capturing such risks with a read read log and that's why it's important you start having a regular meeting as a team yeah, it becomes a statutory meeting that every week you have a read meeting. So if you are using uh, at this point, maybe you still be using a waterfall approach. So you have to be having regular meetings. But if you are using um, agile approach, Within agile approach, you 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 will be having your daily stand up every day, and uh, this is help you to look at risks involved, and you need to be having your uh, retrospectives after every sprint. So at this, you have to at this point to facilitate workshops, your listers and activities. As a project manager. Within this stage, you, you break your project into breakdown structure and you manage and monitor and control all key areas. Then you allocate budget and resources because the project have started at this point. So you, you start planning. It's not like in the initial stage, you don't know what you'll be doing. You don't know the solution you are going to work on. At this point, you already know the solution you are working on. If you see it, um, a data migration project, you know that is a data migration. So you start designing your data migration architecture, or is it um, data integration? It's time you start designing your data integration architecture and planning. Is it um, website creation or web application? Are you creating a, uh, a mobile app? This is the time you design it. So, and for the, the project manager, it's time you start allocating your, your resources. You create a definitive project plan and start allocating resources. Then you create a benefit review plan. This is the duty of a business analyst to review the benefit. This is going to be more of a cost and benefit analysis. Then you create a wireframe. This is work of a business analyst. You create user stories. You create uh, use cases. You create acceptance criteria. Then you create test plan and test cases. All these things are key words in business analysis. So if it's something sounding strange to you, it should be because we have not treated them. And this is what we are going to be doing in business analysis. So you don't have to worry. There's no need of asking what is user story or asking what is acceptance criteria or test plan, test cases, wireframe, use cases. There yeah, is no need of asking that question because I'm not going to answer it because we are going to, by next week, that is what we are going to be doing. At this stage, the projects kick off once the school has been identified and agreed by the uh, senior. Uh, stakeholders. So the project has kicked off. So that's why you are designing the solution. So, like I said, a business analyst is a software engineer. You design the solution. An engineer is someone who designs solution. A building engineer 
does nothing rather than just design the, the building architecture. There's nothing he does. He doesn't participate in carrying block. Uh, so as a business analyst, you are going to be doing a lot of mainly this active this area. This the business analyst is going to be very busy, and the project manager equally is going to be busy monitoring, controlling as well. And then when the the solution is um, uh, being designed by the business analysts or the solution architects, it's time to start executing the solution or implementing the project. And under this, if we are working on, um, if we are working on a waterfall, we just follow the sequential um, activity, follow the project plan to we'll start uh, building our solution. But in this, I, we are going to be working with um, agile approach. So, and what we do under this agile approach is uh, we've seen how to use a uh, Scrum, Scrum framework. You build your test. So, you execute uh, your test plan at this point, you execute your test cases. You have your scrum meetings. So you lead a cross-functional team. At this point, if you are a project manager, you might be answering a scrum master. So organize, monitor, control, make sure there is a good uh, a very good uh, healthy atmosphere within scrum environment and you keep on building your solution sprint by sprint you plan sprint you do your you start the sprint you do your daily stand up you do your sprint review and you do your sprint retrospective and that's how you be cycling sprint until you finish building your solution. At this stage, we begin to build and develop our product within the acceptance criteria and the quality outline at the initial stage. So this is what we do at this point at execute stage. So this is where we actually, this is where when the developers join the project. Within initiate stage and the um, define stage, there is no developers there. But at this uh, execute stage, the developers came in because they are the people that will help to build the solution or the product. And after that, we've done our sprint um, review with our stakeholders. And then the next thing is sprint retrospective. We've done our sprint retrospective. And we've done the deployment at this point. Once we've done all these things, we, 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 that is the the end of the process in a execute stage. We have deployed the solution. But if the solution is not in one sprint, we keep recycling the sprint. If it's going to be two sprint, three sprint, or four sprint to finish. But when we finish the last sprint and do the sprint review and the retrospective, that is the end of execute stage. 
And then we move to closure stage. During the closure stage, we obtain client acceptance form. Client acceptance form, if we are working with this client, uh, we are going to discuss uh, this, uh, some of this terminology, client acceptance form in business analysis, because it's the business analyst that is going to obtain this form, not the, not the project manager. So to obtain this form, this form like to make sure that if you are working within an organization, so the client here is going to be the project sponsor. For instance, if he's the head of finance team that sponsored this project, maybe uh, they want to build one uh, uh, application within the to help uh, receive payment or make payment within the finance department. So the, the client there is now the initiator, which is the head of uh, finance department. So you have to get a client acceptance form from him, making sure that he's happy with what you, the, the, the IT team have uh, developed for them. If you are working in a consulting firm, maybe you guys are working for a client. For instance, if you are working with um, Accenture and uh, you people help Zenith Bank to build the mobile app, then uh, Zenith Bank is now the client. So whoever is representing the Zenith Bank is going to be the client. and you need to obtain client acceptance form where the client signed and the document that is happy you you to you 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 document everybody is happy with the 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 project you people have deployed with them and that is it that's where the project comes and then and at this point then you close all the read all the reads those read them we know what read means risk and the rest of them Whichever, maybe by that time you find out that maybe some risk is still open, maybe we'll, some risk we are still trying to mitigate, but the project has come to an end. So you close everything. There's no need of meeting because there is no more project again. You close all the risk and uh, you carry out post implementation review. Uh, post implementation review, we're going to look at it in. Um, business analysis is where you guys review, it's going to be a collective review, all the project team members, so even the stakeholders come to review, how are you people going to continue manage, how to manage that uh, particular product or software. That's what, going forward. Because you people just develop, you didn't, uh, some people are going to manage it. That's where you have to document on how to implement, um, maintain that particular software. That's what we call post implementation review. Then project closure meeting. Then after this, you have a proper closure meeting, the project manager will call this project. Uh, this is the time you thank your project team, appreciate them for their hard work. And then you look at the lesson learned from the project and uh, you document the lesson learned. Then when you finish documenting the lesson learned reports, upload all the reports, on on the repository project repository and once that is done you the project manager you write end project closure reports so and when that is done then the project has successfully come to an end
方外，只要两个方。So any question? So, if you have any project, if you have any question, you can come up with your question. Okay. If you don't have any question, then the business analysis is going to be starting next week. So, and I'm going to be reviewing the assignment over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Hello, somebody is trying to say something when I mute because there is background, so I have to mute everyone. But if you want to say something, I'll mute yourself and say something. Hello, apart from the first one. Okay, I'm going to I'll be uploading all the assignments and documents. All right. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. So the the assignment. Can assignment. someone use his? Can someone use his or phone to do the assignment? Provided there is no laptop for now. No, as long as you can submit the assignment and it's looking decent. But from the beginning, if you go through the requirement of the course, I told you that you need a laptop. But I'm not going to stop you from participating because you don't have a laptop. So but if you can use your phone to do it, good and fine. Okay, sir, thank you. Yeah. So good night, everyone, and um, see you next week. Uh, when we are starting our business analysis. Bye-bye. <coughs>